everyone, this is Curly Head Med. I'm back and I'll be posting more consistent videos from now on. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys um, my step two clinical skills experience. I actually took the exam about a week ago in Philly. So I'll be sharing with you my experience as well as um, some tips and tricks and mnemonics that I came up with along the way in preparation for the exam. I'll also be sharing with you some other mnemonics that I found on the internet that I didn't personally use, but I know will be helpful to some. So I'm going to start off with the mnemonics that I've used um, for Step 2 CS, and you can start with the page on the right. Um, OPQRST is a mnemonic that I learned like early on in med school, so it's what stuck. Not everyone uses it, but it's what I find most helpful. I will, again, be presenting other mnemonics at the end. OPQRST is what I use for a patient coming in with pain. I then modify that and just use OPQ and T for a patient coming in with another chief complaint. So OPQRST, I ask the patient when did the pain first start occurring, that's onset. Then I ask, has the pain gotten better or worse since it started occurring, that's progression. I ask, has anything made it better, palliative, have you taken any medication for the pain, pills, does anything make it worse, precipitating. Then I ask about the quality of the pain, I ask them to describe the pain for me, is it a throbbing pain, is it a sharp pain, is it a dull pain. Then I ask them if the pain travels anywhere, radiation, rate the scale of a one to, rate this pain on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst pain they've ever felt, that's severity. And then I ask them a little bit more about the timing. How long, how long does the pain last? How frequently does it occur? Um, is it a constant pain or is it an intermittent pain? And then I ask them, has, have they experienced anything like this before? Then, remember, you can tailor this OPQRST mnemonic for a patient who's not presenting with pain, but another chief complaint like um, blood in their stool, or a fever for the past few days, or a headache. So I ask them again, onset, I ask them progression, palliative, meds, and precipitating. Then I ask them to describe it. Like you, they can describe the, their stool, they can describe their headache, they can describe whatever chief complaint they're coming in with. Then I ask about severity and timing again. Then the next mnemonic that I came up with to round out the HPI would be shit with two T's, that's shit, S-H-I-T-T. Ask about sick contacts, hospitalization, recent infections, um, if they had any trauma recently, especially for somebody coming in with abdominal pain or like a headache. And then ask them if they've traveled recently for somebody coming in with something maybe you're thinking of infectious etiology or a PE or a DVT. And then I move on and ask about ROS, review of systems. For, and of course, you remember to ask about symptoms that are related to the chief complaint and will help you narrow your differential, differential diagnosis. Then I ask, I don't have a mnemonic for the remainder of the patient note because I just have memorized the order of it from going through my third year of medical school. So I next move on to past medical history, past surgical history, medications and allergies, family history, and social history. For social history to, remember, to help me remember what to ask, I have the mnemonic Waters, that's W-A-T-R-S. I ask them about their work. I ask them if they currently or have ever used alcohol, tobacco, or recreational drugs. And then I ask about their sexual history. Now, a really important side note, everyone, for those of you taking the Step 2 CS exam, I cannot emphasize this en enough. Don't forget to ask about sexual history. Even if you don't think it's relevant to the patient's chief complaint, just ask anyway, because you never know if they'll give you some tidbit of information that might actually change the direction of your differential diagnosis list. Um, so always ask and always preface by saying something to this effect. Okay, so these next set of questions that I will be asking you are questions I ask all my patients. I want to remind you that everything we say in this room will be kept completely confidential. And if there's anything I ask of you that you find uncomfortable, please feel free not to answer. But of course, I'm here to address all your needs and I want you to know that anything you say here will not be judged. Something to that extent. So then you ask them about their sexual history. And then of course, if it's a female patient, don't forget to ask about their OB-GYN history. 
um, the questions that you could ask are listed right here on this paper. Um, so for all patients, you're either asking about their sexual history or their sexual and their um, OB gynecologic history. All right, moving on to the next page on the left. These are mnemonics that I found helpful if you have a pediatric patient. All right, disclaimer, the mnemonics that I have listed here under the PED section aren't mnemonics that I came up with. There are mnemonics that a lot of people are familiar with, and it's also present in the first aid for Step 2 CS textbook. Okay, so when you have a pediatric patient and you want to ask questions related to their review of systems, you can use the mnemonic cup fevers as. Cup fevers as. So you ask, have they had a cold recently? Have they been coughing? Have they been congested or had um, watery eyes or runny nose? You ask, um, have there been any changes in their urination? If it's a really young patient, you ask about the number of wet diapers they have per day, and if that's changed, same thing. You'll ask about their bowel changes. You ask about fever, ear pulling, vomiting, air and eye discharge, rash and seizures. And then you ask if there's been any change in their appetite, i.e., have they been eating less solids or eating less drinking less fluids ask about the activity level have they been playing less with their siblings or their toys and ask about sleepiness or lethargy and lastly in a pediatric patient aside from past medical history past surgical history and family history you also want to ask the a b c d and sometimes e so you ask about allergies and medications, birth history, whether or not they're completely immunized, up to date on the immunizations. You ask about diet, developmental history, and whether or not they go to a daycare. And then sometimes, depending on the chief complaint, you may ask about environmental exposure. All right, well, these are the alternative mnemonics that I came across online. If you search up medical institution blue sheet mnemonics on Google, you'll be able to find this. Um, whichever mnemonics work for you, I just recommend practice and practice and practice and so they become second nature and you don't really have to think about it on the day of the exam. All right, lastly, I highly recommend the first aid for the USMLA Step 2 CS. Just like with for, um, first aid for Step 1 and first aid for Step 2 CK, it's extremely helpful and it's really the only thing you need in preparation for the exam. All right, as you can see, this is a table of contents for the book. If possible, I would highly recommend going through the book in its entirety um, before test day. But if you're under a time limit, I would say try to go get through the first third of the book at least just to wrap your head around how the exam is laid out. I would also recommend getting a partner so you can practice under time conditions because for most being under this 15 minute time restraint for the patient encounter and then a 10 minute time limit for the um, patient note is what's most daunting. So I would say just practice doing that. To practice the patient note, go to Google and type in usmle.org patient note entry form and that'll take you to a web page that actually has the template for the patient note, including the HPI, physical exam, differential diagnosis and reasoning, and your workup list, all under a 10-minute time limit. So aside from that, I'd also like to emphasize how important it is for the interview, the whole patient encounter, to be patient-centered. Um, so even though the first aid book says that if you're running out of time, sacrifice completing your physical exam for closing the encounter and addressing the patient's concerns. If you feel like you're running out of time and in your head you still have a few more physical exam maneuvers to do, push that aside and close your encounter and address the patient's challenging questions or concerns because in the end that's more important. So when you're closing the encounter, you have a transitional statement after your physical exam, then before you tell them at least this is how I did it, before you tell them what you think the differential diagnosis might be and what your intended workup is. You ask them if they have any concerns, if there's anything that's worrying them. Then you answer their concern, address their concerns or challenging question without giving a definitive diagnosis and then telling them what you think may be causing their symptoms and what tests you believe need to be run for you to obtain more information and come to the right conclusion. 
So always, always be sympathetic with the patient. Consider the patient as a loved one of yours if that helps you get into character. Um, so really just try to be empathetic and y'all are going to do really well on this exam. If you have any other questions, just comment down below. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.